Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you, those of you at home and those of you that are here at the church. Um, this is our very first Sabbath that we've been open since the COVID shutdown, and it's kind of exciting to get started again. Um, for those of you that are at home, I just want to let you know that this was pre-recorded so that we could meet all the COVID regulations. So I'm really here on Friday night, but it's going to be exciting tomorrow to have all these people in the pews. So, And we're going to get started. We're going to sing praise to the Lord. So please join me in singing praise to the Lord. One of my very favorite hymns is To God Be the Glory. I especially, especially like the chorus. Praise the Lord.
This next hymn will be our opening hymn, so if you'll please stand with me to sing, O Worship the Lord. There we go. I want to welcome everyone to church this morning. It feels good. Yes. I'll be giving children's story and I have to wear this thing. It's a, it's a, it's a strange Sabbath indeed, but uh, we're all trying to figure this out. So let's see how this goes. All right. There's a little echo in here. As you can tell, we're doing things a little different. This is, I guess, the new normal, as they call it. So I wish we could have children. So, I mean, I, just the sound of children already is a beautiful sound. And I just want to let the parents know that's one of my favorite sounds. We can't have church without kids making a bunch of sound. So um, I just hope that uh, as you bring your children to church, we will do our best, keep them busy, but I just love the sound of children. And um, that's what we want. We want young people to enjoy church, that they come here to enjoy this time together with family. So children, children's story this morning, I'll have to preach to the kids from up here. Um, the story is about Emily. Emily was uh, just a rambunctious, no, I can't use big words. She was just an active kid. She was just, just a lot of fun in her. She wanted to do everything. Huh? No, it's not bearish. Her name was Emily, though, but she was just, just gung-ho. She just lived life. And, uh, and after church, she liked to, the, the church she went to, there was a field in the back, and she loved to play and run around. And uh, so after church, she, all her friends went in the back of the church, you know, just going up and down, all these different places. And, and the, well, 
she was, she was wearing her Sabbath dress, her favorite Sabbath dress, and she was running through the kind of a field area, and guess what? There was a branch, and it was sticking out, and it kind of caught her dress, and it kind of tore her dress. Oh, Emily, she was young. She's like maybe nine years old. She's like, oh. My husband, you know, she was so sad. She had lost, she had, now she had a big hole in her dress. And she came back crying. Mom, look, there's a hole in my dress. And mom's like, oh, too bad. You know, maybe you could fix it. No, oh, there's too big of a tear. And she was, oh, bad mood. Bad mood all day. And she was sad on Monday and Tuesday. And she was thinking about the dress, her Sabbath dress. I was now all torn up. Well, mom couldn't have this. Mom couldn't have a, you know, a child distraught over a dress. So mom had an idea. Sunday night, she got on a computer. You ever heard of Amazon? <laughs> All right. She got on Amazon. And oh, that's a perfect dress for her. So she got her the dress. And, and then about Thursday, she, I guess she had Prime or something. So on Thursday, the little box came, and, and she said, Emily, go get the door. She goes, what, Mom? I think some, the box were here. Oh, okay. So she went to the front door and got the box, and Mom knew what it was. And the Mom said, hey, Emily, open that up. It might be, might be something you might like. And she's like, okay. So she got the box, and she opened it up. She's like, her eyes went like this. She's like, is this a brand new dress, Mom? She's like, try it on. She, she got a big smile, and she, she, she put it on, and she's like, oh, she went to the mirror, Mom, this is so pretty. Thank you, Mom. And she gave her a big hug, and the first thing, she's like, oh, I got to tell Jennifer. That's her friend. And she's like, she's like, I guess she texted or something. She goes, Jennifer, guess what? I got a brand new dress. And they're all excited. And, oh, I got to call Martha. She, she, she would love this dress, too. And she called all her friends. I got a brand new dress. Hey, on Sabbath, I'm going to show you my brand new dress. And she couldn't wait to go to church. It's like Saturday morning. She couldn't wait. But she put on her, she put on the brand new dress. She went to church, and you could tell how proud Emily was and how happy she was. And she just danced around, and actually the whole church knew. But look at Emily. She's just so happy. She got her brand new dress. She was running around, but this time she didn't go to the woods this time. Okay, this time no more tears. But she was happy. She was excited for what the new dress she got, and she couldn't get wait to share what she got. You know what? When you have something really good, when you get something really nice, you, want, you know what you want to do? You want to share it. Yeah? If you get something really wonderful, you want to share it. And she, Emily was so excited, she wanted to share the news. Let me tell you something. When we find Jesus, that someone who loves us, we want to share it. And as young people, you could share Jesus too. If you're excited about Jesus, don't ever be afraid of saying, hey, I know this wonderful God, and he loves me. And we get excited to share Jesus to everyone around us. My dear young people, let's share the greatest gift we ever got, the greatest gift of Jesus, and let the world know what a wonderful God he is. Well, God bless. Seemed like forever since we've been here. This is the part where we get to uh, look at what the church has done while we haven't been here. I have a verse that I want to read. It's 1 John 3, 17. 1 John 3, 17. But to whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? This video is going to answer that question. So what, what inspired this project that uh, the church has taken on? Well, um, 
in our small group, we were trying to find ways to help our church. And one of the things that we discussed was um, to be the change ourselves, to try to be more friendly to everyone, to make sure that everyone was welcomed on Sabbath morning. Um, also, in our Bible study, one of the things that we had decided we were going to pray about to see if anybody particular that we should reach out to. Um, for me particular, um, I felt impressed that I needed to reach out to Rhea. You know, at the same time, the, the Holy Spirit was impressing me. We, we've always been a mission church ever since I joined this church. And I felt like we needed to get back into to, to doing missions because that helps the church be more active. And so the, the Holy Spirit impressed me to put some... Uh, brainstorming sessions together. Okay. Uh, and did you did, did you go to the first meeting or the second one? To, do you remember? I made it to the second meeting. Uh, yeah. And what did we discuss during that second meeting? Um, during the second meeting, we kind of took all the ideas that had come in in the first meeting. Um, they were already separated between kind of long-term or international and very short-term or local. I don't even remember what I was doing, but the light bulb just came on. Bingo. Rhea needs a better place to live or needs a better living situation and I felt really impressed and so I sent you a message saying I have to be gone but here is my suggestion for a local mission because this is dire. She Hi, we're here at Rhea's new trailer to um, share with you what uh, we have been up to uh, for the last few months. Um, I contacted Rhea and she didn't want me to come out and visit her, said we would have to meet somewhere. So Rhea, can you share with us why you didn't want me to come out to your place and meet with you? Well, because my water had broke underneath from freezing a couple of years before and it had started rotting out the floor and if you didn't be careful where you walked, you would end up with your leg out on the ground. <laughs> And it just wasn't safe to let, I didn't let anybody in, not even my family. One of the things that you shared with me was the fact that your door, your front door of your trailer um, was a piece of plywood. It wasn't an actual door that could, you know, seal out the weather or lock. Yeah, well, the door that was originally there just, just fell apart. And a guy from church actually came out and put that piece of plywood in there. I wouldn't even have had that. Okay, and so then what did we do about the, the bad floor? Um, you and your husband put down some hardwood over top of it so it's more safe to walk. Okay, and you told me something else about your trailer, um, that your bed was really high and it, you were having trouble with your sore shoulder getting in and out of bed. I have to climb up into that bed, and plus the mattress hung over the side of the bed about six inches, so if you, in your sleep, went too close to the edge of the bed, the whole mattress would tip up and flip you out on the floor. What did you do for a bathroom? I had to walk down the end of the driveway to my son's house. Yeah, because you couldn't use yours? No, it was, well, I never could use it when I moved out here because there was nowhere for the sewer to go to. So I never used that anyway. So I always went to his house for that, but I, I took a shower at my house because the gray water can go out. But, um, and then the pipes froze and broke and the water was leaking underneath and I had to just turn it off because it was making the floor worse and worse. Okay, well, I had been praying about um, a new living situation because, um, well, I have a dog and he gets too cold at night in the tent sometimes and plus I wanted to have my brother visit and I hadn't seen him in over 10 years and he only lives like an hour or two away, and um, so he got to come over recently for the first time in 10 years, and we got pictures of each other by our Jeeps. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. So I, I know you also ended up having a family party at your house. Oh, yeah. We um, celebrated my ex-husband's first year of sobriety over here with my daughter and her family and my youngest son. 
That's wonderful. And that could be, that was right here in your new trailer. Yeah. Well, we were mostly outside, but it, when it got too hot, some of us went inside because there's air conditioning in there. <laughs> That's wonderful. So has the air conditioning been a blessing for you then yeah. too? Having that? Yeah. I try not to run it a whole lot because it runs up the electric bill, but um, yeah, when it's just too hot, especially for my poor dog. So this is just a little bit of information on how we went about to get Rhea a trailer and how it has affected her life. You know, this is a good time that we should probably thank those that have uh, contributed to this uh, mission. Um, how do we started out with a lot of money, didn't we? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, we started out with zero dollars in the line item for this particular project. And um, in no time at all, it went tremendously fast. In fact, from what I understand, her family had a great deal to do with how much was uh, donated to this project. Wow. And it also inspired... Um, through all this, it has inspired Rhea to want to try to get a small group together too, right? Yeah, yeah. She would like to try to start a small group there. So, so, so yeah, small groups are amazing. They are amazing. Uh, it's amazing what God can do through his people when they join hands and work together. I'm bringing Teresa up here with me because uh, she spearheaded most of this project. And uh, we still have a little ways to go, don't we? We do have a little ways to go yet. We are getting really close to being done, but uh, Rhea really needs um, to have um, the trailer leveled, which we still need a few supplies left to do that. We need to get some some gravel and some concrete blocks to, to make it level um, a little bit better. Um, and then the other thing we really need to do is we need to build some sort of a um, awning that'll come up over the top of the trailer to protect the roof of the trailer from the trees that it's parked under and uh, to keep it from um, going bad, <laughs> the yeah, roof going bad. That's, that's some of what happened to our old trailer. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is a, a call. This is actually a call to you guys. If, if, if you're handy if, if, in construction or if you're handy in, in leveling grounds, we could use your help. And I want to end with just a verse from John again. He's probably one of my favorite disciples. Uh, John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And that's what this mission has been, a mission of love. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. We're glad to have each and every one of you here. It's so good to see people here. I've, I've been here where it's just been empty pews. So before we have prayer, um, we have one item of business. I want to, we need to have the first reading for Wally and Donna Smith. Um, their thing that came through just as church closed down, we haven't been able to vote on them. Anyway, this will be the first reading. We'll have the second reading next week. Okay, so those that are able, would you please join me in, in prayer? Heavenly Father, we, we praise you and thank you for this opportunity to be able to come and gather together to worship you. It has been so long since we could be together as a church family. We pray for your blessing, dear Lord, 
Help each of us to be drawn closer to your love, to be drawn closer to your um, being able to put your arms around us and hold us and encourage us to follow you. Dear Lord, we, we think of the members that are not able to make it here, some because of illness and others are shut in and still others are, are maybe traveling. And we pray that you'll be with each member, dear Lord, that's not present and encourage them. We pray that for uh, wisdom and guidance, as people are struggling with perhaps finance or illness or, or relationships, we pray that you'll give each member a desire to follow your will and to overcome these issues in, according to your will. Help us as church members to, to encourage those and to help them as we see them. We think of this mission project, and there's many others, dear Lord, that we could help, and we pray that you'll help us in doing that. We pray too, dear Lord, for our leaders of our country and our communities. Give them wisdom in this time when we see what we're told about of a spiritual battle taking place. Give them wisdom and help them to rely on you, we pray. And we thank you so much for Jesus and for his example of love, of sacrifice, and showing the love that you have for each one of us. I pray you'll be with our pastor as he brings the word to us today. Pray, too, that you'll be with him and his wife, Esther, and their family. Bless them. We pray that you'll bless his ministry and this area and help us to be a beacon to the community, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you guys happy to be back? Amen. I just, uh, just feel so good to be here and to wish people a happy Sabbath and uh, this is what God intended. He wanted people to come together and to worship uh, and on the Sabbath day. If you are a guest, please let us know. Back there, we have a little uh, QR code. If you, don't know, if you don't know what a QR code is, a little black and white square thing. If you have a smartphone, you just kind of put your phone on it. We could teach you how. And what happens is that it'll take you to a link so you can put your name and address because we want to get to know you. If you're new here, we want to just get to know you. We want to see you uh, come and uh, enjoy coming to our church. And just so if you want to do that for us, if you don't have a smartphone, you can just write on a piece of paper. It's okay. You can drop it down there. I want to let you know that, as you noticed, we didn't take offering this morning because I guess offering plates are, I don't know, something else now. I don't know. So we do have a little box next to the office if you, that we have tied envelopes there. So you're welcome to give in that box. Also, online, we will also have online the opportunity to give. One of the church things we do at church is we want to be able to give and we want to be able to share the message. And we have a lot of things going on in the church, believe it or not. Even though we haven't been here, we have a lot of things going. I know Kurt has been working and, and Teresa has been working with Rhea and uh, helping her and, and her, her situation there. But also, if you want to look, if you look around in our church, we want to get our church beautiful again. I don't know if it's beautiful again, but just touch it up a little bit. And uh, our church has decided to do a fundraiser. Uh, we want to raise $10,000. And, and we we'll call that phase one because we just want to improve the foyer, maybe do some paint, maybe some flooring. Um, there's a lot to do. Uh, I know maybe you noticed our roof. Uh, that's further down the road, maybe phase two or three. But we just want to keep on improving this building. Uh, to make sure it looks presentable, uh, people come here and feel safe, and we want to make sure we have a church that people enjoy coming to. Um, I already told uh, our elders and board, you know, we might have to build another church soon. I mean, we're going to grow. There's people here who want to come to church. They, they want to be here, and we want to make sure we have a church uh, that can accommodate that. So. 
exciting times ahead. Can't wait to see what God has in store for this church. It's good to see you this morning. Let us pray together and we will start this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you again. <clears throat> again for your blessing. Again for all the goodness and kindness you've shown for us. We thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in the fourth part of our series of what is church. And what is church? Church is mission. Church has to be about mission. When I was in high school, there was a cartoon, and maybe some of you know this cartoon or not, and it's called Far Side. It's a little square cartoon, not a multiple picture, but Far Side. And he would draw this picture, and it would convey an idea or a thought or a message. And as a kid, I liked it. It was funny. In this particular Far Side cartoon, there was a bunch of sheep, and they're all running. And the, but unfortunately, they're all running off a cliff. So you would see a bunch of sheep and sheep running off the cliff. So the next picture, they have, a, they have a two sheep talking on the back of this, of this flock. And one sheep asks, hey, do you know where you're going? And the sheep in front says, no, I'm just following that guy. And obviously, that's a funny little cartoon. But I use that cartoon because I wonder in our world today, the world is going a million miles per hour. You noticed? The world is, just, is, a, is in a high-speed trek. And I wonder to myself, does the world understand our world is coming to an end? If 2020 hasn't caught your attention yet, I hope it's time to kind of wake up. Things are happening. Things are happening in our world. I was reading about, about locusts in India, locusts in China, one of the largest locust swarms in 50 years, they say. In China, in, in, in Korea, it's been raining for 30 and 40 days, swamp, typhoons. They say the bridges are in trouble. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost apocalyptic. Oregon, you know, I don't have to tell you what the last couple of weeks were. I mean, Hillsborough looks like it was burning. The whole state of, or whole state of Oregon and Washington and California seems to be a total hell on earth, they would say. We don't know exactly when Jesus would come. But Jesus says these events will come because he has said this world will end. And Jesus says this, when the world ends, don't be left here holding the keys. This is not where you want to be. When the world does end, I have made something for you that you don't have to be here. Turn with me. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 7, 13 and 14. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. King James here. It says, Enter ye the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there to be which to go to this threat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there are that find it. If people don't do anything, if people are just comfortable in their lives, the Bible tells us we'll just go right off that cliff. It's not the world we live in. If you take no action, just follow what the world tells you to do in lockstep, the result is one, and that one is death. And what God is saying is this, the world's about to end. The world is about to end. And he's saying, don't be here when it ends. I will take you away from this world. I want to give you another way, another path. It might be a more difficult path. The Christian path might be more difficult because we're going against the grain. It's never fun going against the grain, is it? In this world, there's a, there's a thought, there's an idea. They want you to think a certain way, a be a certain way. Have you felt it lately? You gotta think like this, you gotta be like this, and if you go against that narrative, suddenly you're the enemy. You're the bad guy. 
And I wonder one day, my friends, if we Christians might be that bad guy. That suddenly if we don't go along with the normal, we, we will be accused of being the bad guys. I think it's perfectly clear when we read the Bible, that's what's going to happen. That the men and women of God will be persecuted because we're standing up for God's truth. There are two roads. One road is the easy one. You sit back in your big inner tube and you go down in the life. Don't have to make any decisions or any choices. But we're like that sheep because that cliff is coming. And Jesus says, why, oh why, will you die? Why, oh why, will you refuse to lift up your head, take notice of what's going on, and make a different choice? We have stories, don't we? We all have stories, don't we? Is God good? Amen. Is God good? But sometimes we have to learn on our own, don't we? Sometimes we have to learn on our own. I remember when I was 18 years old, I told myself something. I was working at that time, and I, me and God had a conversation. I said, I said God, I know you're real, I know you're there, but I just, I'm just not feeling you. And I told God, look, this is my thing. I'm 18 now, I'm a big boy, I know what I want, I know what I'm doing. Okay, you, hear, you can hear me saying that, right, Bob? It's like, yeah, that's Danny. Right? That sounds like Danny, right? 18. And, and, and I said, God, I think I know what I want, and I'm going to live my life my way. You ever, you ever did that? I'm going to do it my way, just like the, the singer, right? The my way, right? And so I told God, God, look, I, I thank you for being there for me, but it's all on me now. So 18, I got a job, I was doing stuff, I was going with my friends, buying this, doing this, staying out late, you know, just, just what 18-year-olds do, out of high school, and nothing else to do. It was fun for a while, but something interesting happened. One year of doing it my way, I remember sitting in my room, must have been one in the morning, lights off, just sitting in my room. I never felt so depressed in my entire life. And I was taking stock. I said, what's wrong? I mean, I have money, I have a job, I have friends, I'm doing all the things that I want, and I just, you know, I'm doing it my way. But then why am I so sad? Why am I so depressed? I mean, even the thoughts of suicide came to my mind. I said, what's the point of living? This, just, if this is it, I'm not sure if I want this. And I remember what happened next. I was just talking to this, and I could tell God was coming close to me. You ever have that feeling? It's like, and I had nowhere to run this time. I had nowhere to run. And God came to me and says, Danny, I'm right here. I'm like, I know you're there, God, but I don't want to look at you. I've been running away for a year, and I don't want to look at you. And he goes, I'm right here. And I was in a dark room, but I knew God was there, and I... And I looked at God, I guess, in the dark. And I said, God, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go your way. And he says, fine, do it your way. And he goes, so how's it going? It's not going good. And I knew that it wasn't going good. And I said, I was struggling there for maybe an hour or two, maybe two or three in the morning, just struggling. I know God was working in my heart. He was challenging me. And God finally says, you ready? Are you ready to do it my way? And I remember that decision. I was 19 years old then. And I was exasperated. I, had, I didn't know what else to do. My way wasn't working. And finally, I, I said, I capitulated. I said, fine. We'll do it your way. Okay? And God's like, all right. And I remember that day, I made a commitment, okay? My way didn't work because I'm not happy. It wasn't working in the way I thought it would. So I said, God, okay, fine, I'll give you a chance. I'll do it your way and see how it goes. I'm married, I have two children, I have a house, I have a wonderful job, I have friends, family. I just, I've lived, I've lived the dream life. Ever since 19, I have lived the dream. 
I have to live the life that I, 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 didn't, I didn't even think I wanted, but God gave it to me anyway. You know, God is more than you expect. You know that? You want this much from God, and God's like, uh-uh, you, you think too small. I got bigger stuff for you. You think you want to be satisfied? No, 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 no. I want to make you happy. I never knew I wanted kids. He gave me beautiful kids. Pastor, trust me, that 19 years old pastor was not a thought. But he goes, I have a life for you. I have a mission for you. I got something for you to do. Waking up every morning being your pastor is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. I feel blessed to be a pastor of this church. And I think to myself, I'm 50 now, and I said, Lord, you come whenever you want. But I can go no other way. But yours is the only way. There are two paths. There are two paths. And that one path ends in total destruction. And the other path, it ends in total bliss and joy and happiness. And I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you. I think you already know what God can do. Amen? Amen. You are here today, aren't you? Because you know what God can do. And what God is already doing in your life. And that's a wonderful thing. But here's the problem. Okay, fine. We have limitations on how many people we're going to have right now. One day, that limitation will be gone, hopefully. My friends, there are thousands of people out there that need to know God's love. They need to know what you know. They need to know the Savior that you know. They need to see the joy in your life. And my friends, those people need to be here to celebrate God's love in this church right here in Hillsboro. My friends, I believe the Holy Spirit is already working ahead of us. Do you believe me? Do you believe the Holy Spirit is working? I do. He's already working out there. And he's saying, church, that's you, that's us. Church, if you can get ready, if you can get ready, I got people ready for you. I'm, I, I'm, actually, I'm a little worried. Bob, I think this church is too small. I'm already getting nervous. But I think there's going to be an inundation. Because people are looking for something real. People are looking for love. People are looking for community. People are looking for people who believe in things greater than themselves. And my friends, this is what the church is. We are God's representatives of his mercy and love. Turn with me to Isaiah 55, 8-9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. I love the sound of kids, by the way. I just love it. Please, don't hush your kids too much. It feels so nice to have kids making good noise. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I am so glad this church is led by God. If it's led by me or any human being, this is not a human adventure. Does that make sense to you? Church is not a human adventure. It's God's leading. God is leading this church. Now, I might be his representative or pastor, but no, that's not... It's not about me. It's not about what I can do. It's what God is doing already in all of us. I told Jessica. Jessica, wave your hand, Jess. So Jess, she's my office manager, by the way. All the communication you're getting, you can thank her. She's doing a great job with our communication. But I told her when I got here, I said, Jess, I'm not looking for a secretary. I don't, I don't need someone to just make copies and stamp stuff and fold stuff. That's not what I need. I believe God wants to have a team here. We're here to do God's business. That's why we're here. And I already told you, I believe God sent you here and me here to be part of that team. And Bob's here and Kurt's here and John's up there and we have people all around. Guess what? God has brought you here. 
I don't believe in accidents. I don't. I think when I see a consuelo over in the back, I say, you know what? God brought her here, but she has a mission here to do. I've talked to Glenn. I said, Glenn, we've got a mission to do. Young people need the Lord. We've got a job to do. And I'm telling you, my friends, all of us here this morning are here because God has brought us here. His thoughts are greater than mine. His ways are higher than mine. I told myself, Danny, you, you think too small. God has grander dreams than you ever even think about. Do what I have told you to do, God says. Do what I've told you to do. You know, it's, it's, it, to be honest with you, it kind of scares me. Yes? It, it's, I don't know about you, it scares me. I'm like, oh, I have to take a deep breath. I look in the mirror and I say, oh, you're a pastor. Man, that scares me. I remember one time when I, was, when I was a young pastor. Okay, fine. My history's a little checkered, okay? And I remember as a young pastor, I got up to the podium and they're announcing me, oh, we have a new young pastor today. He's going he's gonna to talk to you guys. I was like 20-something. And I remember getting up to the podium and there were some ladies who knew me when I was really young. And they had no idea I was a pastor, right? So when I got up there, they're like, the eyes got like, like, what is Danny doing up there? Okay, he's the, isn't the guy who stole offering and played video games with it. I mean, <laughs> what is he doing up there? God could use anybody. God could take these rebellious little kids, like, what am I going to do with Danny? And God says, No, I got a plan for you. His ways are higher than our ways. You say to yourself, Pastor, but I don't got my life together. I can't teach the Bible. I don't know what to do there. I mean, really? You want, me, you want to use us? And God said, that's right. You're the ones that God wants to use. I remember someone once said, we're a church. We need to show the world God's beauty. We need to be his church. In his mind, he's thinking, we have to be perfect. We have to be the best. And I'm scratching my head. I'm not sure that's what God intended. If, if our church has to be perfect, angels, oh, I think we should shut the door now. My, my door included. I think if we have to wait for people to get everything together and we have no flaws and no failures and no foibles, I don't know if that's the church we're going to have. Because, you see, I think God could take care of that part himself. You see, the perfection, the purity, is not us. It's Jesus. Jesus is the perfection. Jesus is the beauty. Aren't you glad you could point to Jesus? Because you've pointed to anyone else in this room? No, no, no. We're in trouble. We, we have fallen short. We, we don't measure up. But this is the weird part. God says, I'm going to use these fallen, broken, messed up people for my glory. I want you to think of that. Think about it for a second. He's going to use us broken sinners for his glory. And I wonder how. Today I was at a memorial Janae's uncle passed away last week. It's always hard to see loved ones go. Always hard. So give a little prayer for, you know, Linnea and that family. It's always hard losing a loved one. But we sang a song. Amazing grace. How great the sound, right? He loves us, right? He says he loves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Isn't that the song? We think about what God has done to our lives, and I realize what church is. It's God's amazing grace. What is church? It's not a bunch of perfect people, because if we're, if we're aiming for that, I don't think that's what our aim is. What church is, is this. We could testify to God what God has done to, for us. Yes? We could be a testimony to others how good and loving God is. And I think that is what people are looking for. 
They're looking for a holier thou. No, no, no. We'll let Jesus take care of the holy part. What is the church? The church is a mission. To mission to reach people for God. How? To show that we have found Jesus. That we are broken. That we are messed up. And that we're sinners. But God loves us anyway. Turn with me to Matthew 16, verse 8. Math 16, verse 8. Matthew 16, verse 8. When Jesus has perceived what was said unto them, he said, Oh, of little faith. Oh, no, read on. Oh, wrong verse. Where am I? Where am I? 16, 8. That's the right verse? Hmm. That's not the right verse. Sorry. I wrote something wrong down. Where's that Peter verse? Hmm. You want to help me, somebody? Upon this rock. Oh, there it is. 18. I, I missed the one. Ew, can't read my own writing. And I say unto you, thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. That's a fascinating verse for me. It says, the gates of Hades shall not preserve, can, cannot win against the church. And I'm thinking to myself, time out, time out, time out, time out. In many respects, we've treated church as a defensive maneuver, okay? This is our church, and we need to protect ourselves from the world. The world is the bad guys, and we need to keep the world out. I think we misunderstand this verse, because the last time I checked, you don't play offense with a gate, it said the gates of Haiti, the gates of hell. My feeling is this, the defensive posture is by the world. It is the church that should be offensive. I think we've taken too much of a defensive approach that we need to protect something. No, I'm telling you something. The, the object that's being protected is the world, and the gate is the world. And the Bible says that when we take our message to the world, the world has no defense. The world cannot stop the power and the love of God. Your testimony is stronger than the world. You see, I, I don't think it's the Christians that are fighting back. No, I think it's the Christians to go forward. It is we that's going to take the fight to the devil. And we are the victors, not the defenders. I have a friend, well, he was a friend of a, another church. And we talked together. <clears throat> and he talked about his life, and he had a pretty rough life. You know, he had a rough life, family situation, addictions, uh, and whatnot. And uh, we talk, and uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Christian, and, but we talk. And he said, you know, I have a lot of issues still from my past, and I'm still working with them. And then we, we're talking, and he goes, you know, I'm not sure why God has led me this way, but, you know, I'm here and thankful. And, and he, said, he said something to me. He says, you know, Pastor, um, I was a drug addict. Um, I was homeless. Um, I didn't really have parents. You know, it, it was tough for me growing up. But he said, Pastor, when I see a drug addict or someone who's trying to recover come through a church door, my heart goes to them. It just goes to them. He goes, because I, I feel their pain. I know what they're going through. You know, when I see a young person come to church and you could tell their life situation isn't good. My, my heart yearns for them. I, I want to help them. And I looked at him and said, man, God has really blessed you. And he's like, bless me? My life's been a mess, Pastor. No, he's blessed you. You see things that I can't see. You know things that I can't feel. I mean, I've never had a drug addiction. Okay, I never did. 
I was never homeless. I never suffered chronic, you know, being hungry. I never went through those things, but you did. And because you did, you, you, you empathize. You empathize with people, and you, and you know what they're going through, and you reach out to them and say, God has blessed you, because now you know how people are feeling, and you want to help. And he's like, yeah, God has blessed me. My brothers and sisters, we come to this church with issues. I, I'm not going to placate this. We, we all got stuff. Okay, I don't need every stuff on the table, but we all got stuff. We all got past. But Jesus is good. He's helped us heal. He's helped us go where we need to go. And because of that, because of those experiences, we can help others. There's a story of a, of a, of a man, and he had, he had um, three kids. He had three kids, and they were in a subway. <clears throat> and these three kids were just like, they were bouncing off the walls. I mean, just running in the subway everywhere, just yelling and chasing. And, and, and the father was just kind of sitting there, his kind of eyes glazed, kind of staring out to space, you know. And his kids were just running everywhere in the subway, just making all kinds of ruckus. And it was kind of busy, and the other riders in there, they're like, what's wrong with this guy, you know? It's like, you know, he's just sitting there, and he's letting his kids go crazy. And I was like, man, it's like, I wish this guy would just get together and just get his kids in, bring his kids in, you know? Well, this happened for a while, and finally, this one person across from him, where they were sitting, goes, um, excuse me, sir, um, excuse me, hello, and he's like, oh, 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 yes, yeah, sorry, yes, what's going on? Your kids are rolling around the subway, and they're causing, and they're, they're about to hurt themselves over down there. I think you should, you know, bring them in, okay? Oh, 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 he goes, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I, uh, I'm just coming back from the hospital, my, my wife just died, and I don't know what to do. Whew. The whole subway went... We got it. We got it. Your kids could do whatever they want. We got it. They just lost their mom. Suddenly the whole subway just got really quiet and not no one ever said a word. And all the sympathy went to him. We got it. He's hurting. He needs support, not judgment. My brothers and sisters, there will be people coming to our church who don't have it figured out. They're going to be hurting. They're going to, people come to this church, there'll be kids running around, making all kinds of mess, but instead of judging what's wrong with them, we need to, understand, we need to think to ourselves, what's going on? What's happening in their lives? How can we help them? We need to be a mission for our church. We need to be a mission for our world. We need to be the part of the solution, not part of the problem. My friends, I envision a church that would all men and women come here, find God's acceptance in this church, because we are about mission. Last verse. You know this verse, Matthew 28. This one I got the right. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. When Jesus left our world, he gave us a job to do. And this is what Jesus said. He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded to you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The Bible says, go. Go. I guarantee you, most people will not walk through those doors on their own. There's a, Christianity hasn't done the best job at times. We haven't done the best job presenting God's mercy and love. And many people, to be honest with you, are afraid to come to church. I remember talking to another person. I was giving Bible studies and working Bible studies, and she's like, Pastor, I can't go to church. And I'm like, why not? I mean, I'm not good enough to go to church. I'm like, time out. 
What, what did you say? Yeah, I'm not good enough. I feel terrible. I mean, I can't. I mean, church is for good people. I'm not good. Ah, <sighs> where should you get that out of your phone? The church is not for good people. It's for all of us. It's for hurting people. Church is for. I hate to say this. Church is for sinners. It's okay. Do I have your permission to invite sinners? Is it okay? Is it okay to invite people who don't have their life all together? Is it okay to have people come who's all messed up? This is a church for them, yes? And if, if, if this is a church for them, then God will bring them. God is telling, asking us, can I bring my precious children to this Hillsborough church? Trust me. God is asking that question. Can I bring my precious children here? Are they safe here? Are my children safe here? Will they be protected here? Will they be nourished here? Will they see God's love here? And if all of us agree, and I need unanimous support on this one. If you can't agree, please come see me. We need to have a conversation. We do. If you can't agree with me, we need to have a conversation. We do. A serious conversation. But because if all of you agree with me, if that is what we can do, then I think God will honor that. If our desire is to reach the lost, if it is our desire to help those who need help, then God will bring those people here that we can help them. That we can show them God's mercy and God's love. This church is about mission. And you saw that. Thank you, Kurt, for sharing that. We're a church that wants to care for others as much as God has cared for us. Does it mean changing the lights in the foyer? Yes, absolutely. I want a beautiful church to come to. Not for me. I want other people to think this church, this church cares. This church cares about the building and the people. Yeah, we want to improve things. Not for us. We're doing it for them. That we give people no excuse not to come to church. The Bible says in John 12, if I be lifted up, this is Jesus talking, if I be lifted up, if this church could be about Jesus, not about Pastor Danny, not about, if, if Jesus can be lifted up, he says, I will draw all men and women to myself. If Jesus is lifted up, if Jesus is lifted high, if he is the cornerstone of this church, he says, I will draw all men and women to himself. Mrs. White has this really powerful quote. She says, people are dying. People will die. Not because they chose evil, not because they're necessarily bad, but they were ignorant of God's love. No one told them how beautiful God was. And, and she said, that if we would share God's love to them, their hearts would be changed. My friends, this world, let's take love to them. Let's share God with them. And let's make a difference and save those souls that God loves. This will be a church of mission. Next week, we conclude my five sermon series on what is church. And that title is, We Are a Prophetic Church. Seventh-day Adventism has a very important role in the end of the world. We're not just another Christian church. I mean, nothing against the other names. And I'm not going to mention other names of churches, but I really like the Hillsboro Seventh-day Adventist Church. I mean, the seventh day, this is why there's a special reason why we're named that way. We are a prophetic church, not just a Christian church. We have a special role to play. Am I saying that only Adventists are saved? No, come on. Let's, let's, let's get beyond that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm, I am saying that we've been given a special message to share with the world. 
that they will hear God's truth because we have a special prophetic gift and a special prophetic message that when the world does end, we will have God's people prepared for that end. So yes, I believe in Bible prophecy. I believe that God has purpose. And I believe there's a reason why this church exists and why a reason why this will, church will be here till the end before Jesus comes. I love seeing all your faces. I wish I could see your smiles. I, I, I'm pretending all you guys are smiling. I see one guy back there has a smiley, has a smiley mask. Awesome mask. Okay, that's an awesome mask, all right? Um, I, I wish I could see your faces. I wish I could hug you. You know, me and Kurt, you know, we're not gonna, well, we'll hug in private, okay? Deanna will let me, okay? Um, but I, I, I thank you for coming this morning. And for those who didn't get to come, I, I, you know, I'm sorry that you couldn't come, but I hope that we could have this internet for you. I realize for some of us, we've got to be careful too. And we want to make sure that everyone is safe. So with that, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. That your grace is amazing. And you have saved us from our own wretchedness. Father, be with us. Help us to be the mission that you want us to be. Help us to be the church that you need to have in Hillsborough. That we can be, Lord, a, a conduit of your grace and love and mercy. Father, let's take our message out. Let's show the world that Jesus is the most powerful force in the universe. That love can and will indeed conquer all. So I thank you. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. If you could remain in your seats, we'll have deacons come and to excuse you. Um, I would, don't all leave. I would love to meet and just mingle a little bit outside. Enjoy. Have a wonderful Sabbath. God bless.